Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let us see the last concept of module 5 in basic electronics and communication that is microwave communication. So in this video, we are going to discuss introduction to microwave communication, the transmitter and receiver block diagrams and the components present in the transmitter and the receiver. So coming to the introduction of microwave communication, first we need to understand why it is called as microwaves. So microwaves is the term which is originated from the frequencies which is used for the communication. Here the range of frequencies used is in around 1 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz. Means the high frequency ranges we are going to call it as microwaves. These frequencies if you see the, the electromagnetic spectrum we can say. So this is the radio waves with, the, with having a frequency of around 10 to power 4 hertz. So after that we will be having a microwave, then 10 power 12 and as it goes we will be getting infrared, visible light, ultraviolet rays, x-ray and gamma rays. So microwave communication comes in the range of frequencies where 10 power 8 hertz we can say. So 10 power 8 hertz in the range we will be calling it as microwave communication. So the frequencies will be starting from 0.3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. So with that frequency ranges. We have a wavelength of around 30 centimeter to 0 0.03 centimeter. So we can uh, say the wavelength in terms of micrometers. So the name is given as microwaves here. Sometimes the higher than the 30 gigahertz frequency is also termed as microwaves. So here you can see extending up to 600 gigahertz. And one more thing we need to understand here is that this microwave communication will be following a line of sight communication technology. Line of sight in the sense, if you observe this particular diagram which I am showing here, there will be a transmitter at one end and the receiver at other end. So we need to transmit this input data to the receiver. In between, we will be having two transmitter and receiver antennas. The communication between these two is going to be happen in a line of sight. Means in a straight line we can say the communication will be happening from the transmitter to receiver. There is a straight line of communication that will be called as a line of sight communication. This is the method where microwave communication is going to use. So here because of the line of sight communication technology which uses the high frequency beams that has electromagnetic waves which provide high speeds wireless communication. The speed of the communication improves here so that we can transmit the voice, video, data also. And these signals are going to be transmitted directly from the transmitter to the receiver. That is what again means the line of sight communication. And the best example for the microwave communication is that radar. Radar technology uses the microwave communication where it is like a point to point communication. And this is the electromagnetic spectrum which we have seen already. Uh, and one more thing you can understand here as frequency increases wavelength decreases since we are calling it as microwave means the wavelength will be uh, represented in the terms of micrometer and this is the different band representations with respect to the frequencies are concerned so the low frequencies in microwave frequency band is starting from 1 gigahertz we say so that is L band as we go uh, forward up to some 100 gigahertz so that is W band where actually these bands frequencies are going to be used means the L band is going to be used in GPS carriers and S band in weather radars, C band in primary used in satellite communications and also X, KU, KA and V bands. Generally we are going to use these microwave communications in satellite communication. And then coming to the transmitter of this microwave communication. So this is the block diagram. You can observe here, we have a baseband signal as an input, it is given to the pre-emphasis network, then there is a FM deviator, then IF amplifier, then mixer, finally filtered output will be given to the antenna. So we need to understand what are all the steps it is going to carry out. First is the baseband input signal. This baseband input signal as we seen in communication, so baseband input signal in the sense it is the information what we are supposed to send. So it can be a channel from the FDM frequency division multiplexing channel input or it can be a TDM input coming from. So this is what the baseband signal is. It is given to the pre-emphasis network. 
So this pre-emphasis network provides an amplification so that to higher frequency signals. So this is going to give an amplification, the early amplification we are going to do to reduce the noise vacancy or to provide a uniform signal to noise ratio to the next level. Then we will be having a FM deviator where the input is given as the output of the pre-emphasis network as well as the IF. Here IF in the sense it is an intermediate frequency. This is a carrier signal we can call. So this carrier frequency of around 60 to 80 megahertz is given for the modulation. So this baseband signal amplified version will be given as a modulating signal to the FM deviator. This will be act as a modulator. Uh, modulated output will be given to IF amplifier. This IF amplifier is an uh, amplifier stage again. This amplified output will be given to the mixer. So this mixer converts the IF signal. Why we are calling it as IF signal means the frequency to which we have modulated is 60 to 80 megahertz that will be called as intermediate frequency. So here is the signal at the mixer will be having that frequency signals. So we calling it as this is a mixer which converts IF signal into microwave frequencies. So here you can observe microwave generator as an input here. So this mixer will be converting IF frequency to RF microwave frequency. So from the output of the mixer, we are going to get the microwave frequencies actually. So this output of mixer given to the bandpass filter, here the bandpass filter filters the signals we can say or it is going to select the set of band of signals to be transmitted and then it is given to the channel combining network and then output of the channel combining network will be given to the transmitting antenna for transmission. This is what FM transmitter is where output of the mixer will be the microwave signal what we are going to get. Then we need to understand one more thing here. If the transmitter and the receiver is of far distance and there are uh, many disturbances in between. So the basic understanding of microwave communication is that it will follow line of sight. So in between this transmitter and the receiver, if you observe, this is the actual line of sight. This is the line we say this is the line of sight. But here we can't transmit the signal in the line of sight like this. It gets degraded because of so many uh, interferences we can say. So that's why the concept of repeater is going to be used. So the repeater A and repeater B is going to be placed at the top of the hill where the communication between the transmitter and the repeater happens first and repeater will transmit that signal to repeater B and then it will communicate to the receiver. So the final destination we can say. So this becomes the virtual line of sight now. So this can be treated as a virtual line of sight. Why? Because the actual line of sight is this, but we can't achieve this actual line of sight because of some mental disturbances we can say. So because of that repeaters are going to be used and then finally it will reach the destination. Then we need to understand the receiver part. So we have seen the transmitter part, the exact reverse operation we need to carry in the receiver part to get the baseband signal as the output. So we know that since we have a antenna at the input side to receive the signal. So this antenna is going to be received and it is going to separate the signals as per the requirement. Channel separation network is there. Here channel separation network that provides the separation between the individual signals. Similarly in the transmitter also we have a channel combining network. Here we have channel separation network and then it is given to the bandpass filter. Here it will select the particular band which is interested to receive and then it is given to the mixer. Here mixer will be having a microwave generator. This microwave generator is a carrier here so that it will separate out the uh, signal with the microwave frequencies to the uh, IF range. In the IF amplifier, it will amplify that signals and then it is given to the I FM detector. This is FM actually. Uh, this block you can treat it as FM. So this FM detector is going to demodulate the signal. Since we have the output of the amplifier will be in the IF range. Then we have a FM detector. It will be acting as a demodulator. Then it will be given to the de-emphasis network. So this de-emphasis network output will be taken as the baseband output. This is how the receiver works. It is exactly reverse to the transmitter what we have seen. So this is about the microwave communication, how it will be in a satellite communication we can say. Thank you.